Having grown up a stone's throw away from Southampton Water, it would be rude of me not to cover this venue. Western Shore is one of best known marks and a popular match venue. It was once well known for its flounder fishing, particularly during the winter. It's on the eastern side, directly opposite Hive, and near Netley, which it merges into. Western itself is adjacent to Wollstone, a major suburb of Southampton, and Western's tower blocks provided backdrop for this estuary environment. The spot on fishing is easily accessible, being near the southern car park along Western Parade. My first rod is ready to go and it has a three hook clip down rig with long snuds fished as a flapper. I've pulled down the lower snud so it's effectively a two up one down rig. My bait for this session is quality ragworm which has been dug locally and it's been obtained from Lock, Stock and Tackle in Portsmouth. I think these were the leftovers from a match at Eastney the night before but are still very lively. I'm baiting up my second rod, which has a similar rig, and since I'm targeting flounders, I'm selecting some of the smaller worms, which are almost the size of Maddie. Both rigs have size 4 hooks, and on some snuds, I'll have a longer worm with a couple of smaller ones tipping the point of a hook. Both rigs have fairly lightweight Tucana leads, as I'm not expecting any tidal pull. There might be a bit when the tide starts going out, but uh, I'm here fishing over high water. And of course, Southampton has this double tide. I'm fishing a neap tide and have set up near the water's edge. I'm not expecting to have to move my kit down as the tide ebbs. I've arrived close to the top of the first high water time and I'm expecting it to drop then come back up again before it starts to ebb properly. My two rods are fished at different distances. The first one I've put out is at long range and the one I've just cast is probably medium range. Now at times I will be dropping this a lot closer in um, it's just a question of trying to search out where the fl flatfish might be lying. I'm casting onto mud flats, but since I haven't looked at this mark at low water, it's a bit hit and miss. I just have to cast around and feel my way around and guess if there's any bars or gullies. I'd obviously like to know where the fish holding areas are but according to other people walking and fishing, having fished this area before um, I've been informed that um, it's pretty much pot luck flounders can turn up anywhere You may notice that one of my rods has a stiffer hollow tip this is not by design it's because the other tip section, which is spliced, unfortunately, has one of the rings with the ceramic having come loose. I was a bit wary about fishing this spot, having been informed that there was a boat dredging for clams the day before, and it's here again today. It's debatable about how much damage it might do to the seabed and whether it would affect the fishing at all. When you're not getting bites, all sorts of excuses come to mind. One thing for sure though, when you're fishing an estuary you've got to be wary of the uh, crabs which are present. If you leave your baits out for too long you're more than likely to bring in with nothing left on the hooks. The crabs aren't always very active and in this case all I have to do is to top up partly chewed worms um, with fresh ones. If I replaced them then I'd soon run out of bait. I'm leaving the bigger worms 
for when I feel I might have to start fishing for the schoolies. My less than enthusiastic look during this session is not down to lack of action, but because I fished it pretty much in agony. My left knee started playing up, and to be honest, I was really grateful for the bucket seat, which allowed me to stretch my leg out. You might also notice that I've varied the position of the snuds on my rigs. In this instance, I've moved the lower snud up so it's not hanging below the lead. Whether this makes any difference or not, I don't know. But uh, if I, I feel that if I'm not making these changes or not casting at different ranges or doing anything different and doing the same thing all of the time, I'm less likely to catch. If you're not catching and you continue to do the same thing, you probably end up not catching at all. This time I've cast a lot further in and further down drift. As, as mentioned before, it is just a question of searching the ground and seeing if you can pick up the odd fish from wherever. This is my first bite coming up. It's a minute tremble on the rod with a stiffer tip. Could easily be mistaken for a crab. If I wasn't using braid, I probably wouldn't have seen this at all. Later in the session, I had three other bites like this. I tried to film one of them, um, and the other two, I left them to see if they would develop. In each case, nothing happened and no fish. So I was glad that I made the decision to strike at this bite because um, it feels like quite a chunky fish. So, success. A decent flounder on the middle snood. It's well over a pound and in lovely condition. Since I didn't leave a bite to develop, it's also hooked in the mouth, which makes it much easier to unhook and return unharmed. Dragging the rigs is worth a try, since it lifts up the bait and also stirs the bottom a bit. If this doesn't attract a passing fish, my way of thinking is 
at least potentially you're putting it away from where crabs might be sitting. You might just make out a little tremble on the left hand rod. Potentially a bite, but it's one of those I didn't strike into. And of course, that little tremble didn't develop into anything. We're now between the two high tide states and I get another little tremble which this time I decide to strike at but unfortunately nothing there. By my left shoulder you can still see that dredger working this part of the shoreline. It was there in front of me most of the day. fairly sure that was a bite and since all of my little knocks have been at distance um, I'm rebaiting and then casting a fair way out. When it's quiet like this, going through the motions is much better than just sitting on your hands waiting for something to happen. So it's cast out, wait a bit, drag your baits, wait to see if there's a bite, wait a little bit more, nothing happens, put it in, check for any damage to bait done by crabs, rebait or just add a little bit more fresh bait onto what's already there um, and then cast out again. Uh, that's pretty much all you can do. Even though there isn't much action, I 
try and stay alert. An alternative to moving your rod to create a little bit of motion, um, just turning the reel handle a few times, it either takes up the slack and maybe moves the bait a little bit. The second high tide has been and gone and it's now ebbing properly. Now normally in Southampton water this is the prime time. If there is to be an improvement in sport this is the time I expect it to be. Half an hour after the second high tide. I did get a little knock which I ignored. As before I was hoping it would develop but it didn't and I really should have struck into it. now an hour down from the second high tide and I'm having to put a little bit of extra strain on my left knee having to move down a shingle for casting to try and get that little bit of extra distance. I'm not whacking it out but um, I'm still trying to get it a fair way. Now that's better. As soon as I cast out, I've noticed my other rod started to bend round. Proper bite. But um, I don't think it's a flounder. I'm pretty sure it's a bass, since it's putting up a pretty good scrap in the shallow water.
I would be lying if I said that the fish hides my smile. Normally I'd be pleased with something like this, but uh, my left knee is playing up so much that uh, I can't even raise a smile for this. light is fading and the tide has gone right down and now find, finding myself up getting my legs stuck in the mud. State it's almost dark, not wanting to give up. I was convinced I was going to get another fish. A bite right at the death. There couldn't have been more than a foot of water at most in front of me. But um, I've got a fish on. Earlier I would have been casting onto the ground that's in front of me now. Nothing like the size of a fish before, but at least it's a flounder and makes staying worthwhile. 